Hello everybody and welcome. My name's Lindy Smith and today I'm going to introduce you to my cake tiling technique. It's a technique that I love doing. I've made various cakes using this technique in all different colours. The first one was in my Simply Modern Wedding Cake book and I love doing it so much that I was when I was approached by Craftsy to fill my last class, I also did a version uh, in that as well. And then since then I've been making lots of different ones with my students. So I thought today I would hop on and give you a very short introduction. So if you've got any questions about tiling on cakes, if you want to know how it's done, then just keep watching and ask me anything you like. We've got Norma saying hello, which is lovely. So I can, it, this is live. So if you are watching live, then do pop on, say hello, tell me where you are in the world and we'll start the conversation rolling. Uh, Deb says hi as well. Good morning. I had a lot of problem this morning. I couldn't get my phone to be landscape. It was only being portrait. So it took a little bit while to get going, but I managed it. So I'm really pleased with that. Now this cake in front of me here is one that I made on Friday with my students. It's using one of my new tiles, which I'll introduce you to in a moment. The one, the yellow one over here is using the first set of tiles that I designed uh, based on a trip to the Alca Alcazaz Palace in Seville. And I just was totally inspired by the tiling I saw there. So that's what inspired the original cake. And from that, I've created all sorts of different ones and different tiles. So I'm going to show you in a minute. First of all, I'm going to spin this round. Ah, oh, Samantha says so she's coming to Cake and Bake. Fantastic, Samantha. I will see you there. I'm there on Saturday and Sunday. That's the Cake and Bake in Manchester. So do come and say hello. Are you bringing your students with you, Samantha? I hope so. I'd like to see them all again. Okay, I'm just going to twist this round. Moira says good morning. She's from America. Good morning to... Oh, must be afternoon. I'm oh, sorry. It's morning with you, afternoon with me. We've got Irene from the Philippines and Lucy. I know you're from Italy. <laughs> Caroline says, this is beautiful. And Samantha says, yes, she is. So there we go. I'm just moving this around so you can see the detail on some of these tiles. Now, they're all made with stencils, which I will show you in a moment. So what I'm going to do is, as always, I'm going to flip the camera. Now, all the settings on my phone have changed. So you just have to bear with me while I relearn what I've got to do. I'm going to move this out of the way first. That way. I will give you zoom in in a little bit. Samantha says, her I presume her students cannot wait. Fantastic. I look forward to seeing you. I'm doing some little demos, Christmas cake, uh, Christmas cookies I'm doing at Cake and Bake. So I'm going to flip the camera, show you the cutters that I've used and some of the stencils. So bear with me. Hopefully, oh, it's going to work. Will it work? It's going. Here we go. Right. So over here, I've got the original cutters that I designed for the cake that's in the book. And you can see on the sticker, it's a blue and white one. And that's the one that I made in my Simply Modern Wedding Cakes book. So that's the larger set. And on the, that particular cake, I used two. Uh, I used the medium ones as well. And then there's a little mini cakes in the book, which are these. So that's where I started. Of course, I'm never content with just one option. So I've created another four sets of tiles. And these were inspired by a trip to a tile museum in Colebrookdale at the Jackville Tile Museum. It's an amazing place to go. I spent hours just looking at all different tile designs and tile patterns. It was fabulous. And you've got the simple arabesque, which is that one. And this is the medium arabesque, which is the one that I've actually used on the black cake you've just seen. Down here, we've got a fish scale set, which is these. And this is the uh, larger arabesque. Now, these all are interlocking so that when they go together, they create a lovely tile, as you see on the, let me show it go larger there on the little example. So these are the packets that we sell them in. And as you can see, each packet comes with a, with, a, with some inspiration. Okay, so the other thing you'll need is some stencils. And I've got a few of my own designs over here. You'll need a stencil that's got quite a detailed pattern because obviously the tiles are fairly small. I'm showing you various ones. These are all available online. Samantha's saying the students will have been painting on cakes this morning. That's a lovely technique to do as well. I adore painting. It's very therapeutic. It's a bit like this tile making. It's incredibly therapeutic. 
So there we are. There's some, some of the stencils I've been using. And the other thing you'll need is you will need some brushes and you'll need some colored dusts. You'll also find a smooth as useful and some spacers. Now I've got my one mil spacers here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop my camera onto a stand. Just reach over and get the stand. Bear with me. Now I've done a little prep down here, as you can hopefully see. I rolled out some paste between the, the one mil spacers. Now these are Lindy's Cakes ones. We have them available on our shop. And it means that all the tiles, once you've rolled out the paste, all the tiles will be all the same thickness, which is quite essential for this technique. As you can see, I've put a number of stencils on top of the, the paste. And all I'm using is the Greek Repeat, which is this one up here. It's one of my favorites for tiling because of the detail in the pattern. I've also used some more autumn inspired ones. And if you've signed up to our newsletters, we sent an autumn inspired newsletter out yesterday. And in it, I've showed these little stencils because I love this like chrysanthemum effect here. And if you do these with autumn colors, they make beautiful either cookies, cupcakes, or designs uh, for a cake. Very much autumn inspired. If you want to sign up for our newsletter and receive those, I will send a link afterwards. So what you do once you've placed your, you've chosen your stencils, you just place them on and you press them down on top of your soft paste. Now it's important you do this because if you don't, when you put the dust on, what happens is it can spoil the pattern and it can land on top of your, um, sugar and you don't get the nice cream crisp patterns so i've got it as i showed you earlier I'll just pick the camera up and show you a selection of colored dusts here now these are obviously all edible a few more uh, hellos we've got um a lady from the maldives she thinks she loves my cakes they're beautiful and adriana um says good day hello to all of you and welcome so I'm just going to pop that forward a bit so you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one brush for each colour. And I'm just going to load my paintbrush so you can't really see that. But I'm going to load it with red. And I'm going to start dusting over this particular stencil. So I'm going to start with the red dust. I'm going to add a little bit more. Jan says, hi, hello, it's lovely that you're live. I do love Facebook Live, and as you probably realise, I haven't done it for a little while. It's been a little bit chaotic here at Lindy's Cakes. Um, so much to do, as always, but I thought today I'd just love to pop in and show you a little bit more. You might have seen me stenciling before on Facebook Live. I just love it, and the tiles is a technique that I've been asked to show. Uh, girl, I that's often on here called Amanda asked me to do this a while ago. So I thought I've got all my stuff out because I was teaching. So why not show you as well? So as you can see, I'm adding some green leaves like that. Sharon says, hello from Devon. And she's telling me that she's a hobby baker. A lot of people are, it's a wonderfully therapeutic way of spending your time I love it when I'm making cake. A lot of people say to me, you must, you know, you have a wonderful job. You must be making cakes all the time. The truth of course is I'm not. I do a lot of admin, a lot of traveling. It's never as it seems. And when I get to uh, make cakes, particularly with my students, it's such fun and I really enjoy it. So it's a privilege sometimes just to sit down and to create. And it's also incredibly therapeutic, particularly stenciling. Stenciling is a, such a lovely technique to just enjoy. And it's a bit like colouring by numbers because all the, pat, all the hard work's been done because the stencil has done the patterning for you and you're just like colouring in. I know adult colouring is very popular these days. My daughter does a lot of it. And again, it's very therapeutic. So let me just colour it. Now what you can see that I'm doing is I'm putting different colours in different parts of the stencil because when I make the tiles. I want them all to be different. I want them all to come together. So I'm using the same color palette, but I just want a different pattern on the different area. Now I'm being quite sparing with this dust, as you can see, 
because I don't want too much uh, lying around on top of the surface of the stencils. Now, I've nearly finished. We've got uh, Linda's watching from Kenya and she's saying she loves it. So I'm pleased to hear that, Linda. That's uh, really good. I hope you'll have a go afterwards. If you've got some stencils, just remember you need to have ones that have got intricate patterns. You'll see why in a moment. It will just have some green leaves on the top of that one. Now you can obviously spend much longer than I've done picking out little bits of the stencil in different colors. This one particularly, this one here, is wonderful for doing that. You can make every little dot a different color, every petal a different color, or you can do what I'm doing and just go over it quite roughly. Okay, once you've finished the stenciling, what you need to do is to remove any excess dust, just pushing it off the stencil so that when you lift it, it doesn't fall onto the paste below. So let me just remove all this. Debbie said, this looks fab. It is fab, Debbie. It is great fun to do. And we had a really good class last Friday. And my students, we did three different techniques. We did, we made gelatin baubles, we um, did some wafer paper flowers, and we also made some tiles. Okay, so what you want to do, because you've got three different stencils here, is you want to lift the top one first. So in my case, it's this one. I lift this. There we go. And then I'm going to lift this one. Moira says, I love how you coordinate colours to match and stand out on your cakes. I'm known for my colour, Moira. I absolutely adore using colours and combining colours in more unusual ways. So there we are. That's the stencils. I hope you like them. I always feel that they're the eureka moments. Now, the cake that I was making, the black one, which still needs some more tiles, uses this tile. So this is the medium arabesque. So what I'm going to do now is to cut some shapes out of it. Now, you could just go over the... the place it on there. You could, I could just use the tile uh, and take the whole of the flower or if I want to try and get two, be economical with my tiles, I can put it to one side, a bit like that, and then I can get two out. But I think now, yeah, I'm going to go there. So I'm just going to use two hands here and just press down like that. And then this one, I'm going to just, this one I will do two. I'll do one, that part of the flower there. And then I use the leaf up here, like that. Okay. Debbie says she wants to attempt the gelatin balls this year. I love making them. Later, I've got a whole lot to add to the top of the cake as I've just done, and I will do that later and put a put a picture up so you can see. But they are such fun to do. I've got a blog all about it, so I will send a link afterwards so you can have a look. What we discovered um, last uh, week at the class was that some of the students were too impatient and they didn't let the gelatin bloom for long enough. So actually they got lumps of gelatin on their baubles. But the secret, of course, is to let it bloom and then to melt. So I will pop a, a link to that as well. So with this particular pattern, you can make everything regular. And I know from my teaching over many, many years that some students like everything really, really regular. But I like things more haphazard, so that's what I've done. So if I lift this now, you'll see the resulting tiles. Hopefully if I press down hard enough. There we go. It's a little trickier when you've got a camera in front of you. But hopefully, let's move this away. There we are. So those are the tiles that I've just created. I will come bring the camera in and see a little bit closer. If it will focus, there. So those are the patterns that I've made using the chrysanthemum. And oops, there we go. Now what I do is I let leave them on my work surface for a little, a few seconds or so while I make more and that way they harden up a little because what I don't want to do is when I lift those to pop them on my cake for the shapes to distort because the important thing of course with tiles is that every one is the same shape and so they lock together. So what I'm going to do now is pop the camera back and bring the black cake in and we'll give it a bit of a twirl and you can see it closer. So 
Ah, Debbie's asking a question. Are you using normal sugar paste? No, I should have said I'm using modeling paste. So I'm, you can buy all sorts of different makes now, but I make my own. I add a teaspoon of gum to eight ounces, 225 grams of sugar paste. And uh, the gum I use is gum tragacanth because it sets a little bit harder than if I were used, say, CMC or Tylos. So I prepare in advance. So let me just flip this over. Let me just come here and see if I can flip my camera. This all, I've got a new button to press and my, it's not letting me. Bear with me, everybody. Oh, come on, flip. <laughs> ah, dearie me, Debbie says thank you. That's my pleasure, Debbie, it really is. Oh, why won't this flip? I might have to do it a different way if it's not going to flip. It's not going to. Okay, I'm going to pop this back up there and I'll bring the camera in this way. Oh, the camera, the cake in. If I bring it in there, and then I... Right, let's show you here close up. So, you can see some of the tiles. Ah, oh, it is focusing. There we are. And I'll keep pressing this while I look at that and see if I can get it back to me. It doesn't want to come back to me. Nope. I'm afraid <laughs> it's not going to come back. Oh, that's the problem of going live. I had real problems this morning trying to get the camera the right way up and now I can't get it to flip. Oh, Sharon says that's gorgeous. Thank you very much. And lots of hearts going across as well. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. It's very encouraging. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't get it to flip. Not at all. Okay, right. Let me show you the yellow cake too. If I move that over to the light over there, I'll give you a close up of this. Now, this is looking a little bit tired. If I, oh, okay, let me show you that. Will it go? There we are. I love doing this yellow and black scheme. It's one of those that um, I would never normally do, but I noticed that it was one of the trends for this summer, black and yellow and white. So I thought I'd give it a go. And I'm actually really pleased with this cake. It's using my large Moroccan tiles that I showed you earlier. See, the light's not particularly good. There we are, that's better. And it's using all sorts of stencils. That one's um, on the yellow tile is my cherry blossom and this is a hedgerow flower one. That's the one I was stenciling with earlier. Let me see if it focuses there. Yeah, the uh, chrysanthemum. These are actually snowflake stencils. And the black on yellow is a peony stencil, which is one of my designs. And that silver one that you can see, silver and black, again, that's the chrysanthemum one that I was demonstrating with earlier. So you can do all sorts, and this one, you can see the different colours. Again, it's the cherry blossom, the one, um, the yellow with the black centre. Go down a bit more and you can see more. Okay. That's, I'm trying to flip the camera again. It just doesn't want to. So I'm afraid you can't see me again. Oh, what a pain. I will pop pictures up and ah oh, it's done it fantastic now <laughs> oh, that took a long time didn't it right so what i'll do is i'll bring the cake the cake it's yeah i didn't finish it bring the cakes in that's that one and i'll bring this one in so you can see this one let's move the stand so there we are I'll bring that in and now we can <laughs> see these oh technology if I bring that right in, there we go, and turn that round, you can see I've used all sorts of stencils on this. Now, the, what, the green one that you see here, that's the Greek repeat that I was using earlier. This one is my paisley one. It's my small paisley circle, which I love using. And we've got all sorts here. The hedgerow flowers is that one. And the red one here is the chrysanthemum I was using. The black and silver, again, is a Greek repeat. So you can see there's all sorts on here. And as long as the pattern is small enough, it'll work. 
Linda from Brazil, uh, says, I want to see them cut the cake. You couldn't cut these if they are um, polystyrene dummies, I'm afraid. The students, though, on Friday did do it on real cake and they were going to take them home and share them with their families. And I've already posted a picture up on my Facebook page. So if you go onto the Facebook page itself and look back, you'll see the cakes that my students created there. And they, as I say, they were real cake. Okay, well, thank you very much for being with me today. If you've got any questions, then do pop on and ask me and I will pop all those links that I promised you up as well. So thank you for joining me today. And Amanda, I hope this is what you are after. And thank you for requesting it. And if any of you have got requests for future Facebook Live posts, then please do ask and I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much and goodbye until next time, as they say.